This, uh, this episode underwritten by Saiyan. Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Pretty good. Tonight on the show, I'm going to teach you how to make a party dish. If you want to call it that. It is a pineapple ham and cheese slider dish. And th the appeal of this dish is you can make a lot of these in bulk and it doesn't take that much effort. So if you are a lazy party goer, this might be something good to bring to the party. In addition to jungle juice. That's right. Me and John, two men in their 30s, are drinking leftover jungle juice. Thanks, Dr. Sam. Also, they, uh, Dr. Sam, she gave me a wilted uh, red bell pepper. And that's actually gonna come in clutch because I'm gonna make something tonight with bell peppers and I forgot to get one. Save the day, boom. This, uh, this episode underwritten by Saiyan. With special thanks to Dr. Saiyan. Okay, let's get rolling. All right, so I did a little food prep here and that is because we're gonna use some caramelized onions. That's right, caramelized. The holy flavor of good. Caramelized onions are often cited in recipes as something that takes 15 minutes to prepare. That's not true. <laughs> this just, just isn't. So I've had these, uh, these onions have been going for five hours. Phil, is that longer than 15 minutes? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm not great at the math. Let us know in the comments below if you think five hours is longer than 15 minutes. But certainly, you can caramelize onions faster than five hours, but if you're doing a slow cooker, it takes all day. So, that's the easy way to do it. So I did that. They're pretty much done. We're gonna preheat the oven to 375 degrees. All right, so I'm making a large amount, which is why I'm using a sheet pan. These are Kroger Hawaiian Sweet Rolls. New formula. You can see that it's uh, flavored with hibiscus flour. <laughs> okay, all right. So, if you want to be the epitome of lazy, which is okay if you want to do that, you can actually just, uh, like you get a bread knife and then just split it, the whole pack. And that appeals to some people uh, who are loafers or layabouts. But you'll actually get better results if you just cut the rolls. Now I know that's that's a lot of work for some people, but uh, you don't gotta be some people, you know what I mean? I think my bread knife's in the dishwasher. <laughs> Why would you do that to us? I need that bread knife. <laughs> All right, no harm, no foul. Everyone's, everyone's fine. Okay, I got my bread knife so I can actually cut this bread. I gotta stay pretty unhappy. Pretty unhappy with how these are cutting. Yeah, we'll be back after I cut all these rolls. Good grief. Okay, well you can see how smoothly that went. And here's, here's how gummy my knife is. Oh, this is terrible. But it's fine, we'll uh, soldier on. All right, so I've got some smoked ham from Whit Farm. This is high quality ham. If you wanted to, one of the things you could do is you could remove some of these buns and you could very simply take that ham and just place it. Actually, I think that's exactly what I'm gonna do because I think it will be funny. <laughs> it will make for a better experience if you don't do it this way. But again, we're expediting that process. Look at look at how perfect that, I did not plan that, John. I did not plan that at all. I'm actually quite happy with that. That is, that has improved this experience already. Okay, next up, we're gonna shred some cheese. And if you wanted to expedite this process. Oh, I used it. Did you guys know John's afraid of steam? The water splashed on me last time. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, you could use slices of cheese. That would be fine. This is a Ohio Swiss Sharp Swiss from Grandpa's Cheese Barn. Good stuff. Sharp Swiss is uh, not super common, around here at least. Like, what in there? <laughs> But it's like Swiss that tastes even Swissier. So I'm gonna I'm gonna shred this and then I'm gonna see if it's enough. Let's just see what we started with here. So I'm gonna put the cheese on the ham. That's how you make ham and cheese. This is gonna be a real slam dunk episode. I can feel it. I feel like this this one is gonna go down in the books as an episode. Okay, so that side I can't in good conscience grate these blocks anymore without risking my livelihood. So we're gonna we're gonna switch it up. This other side we're gonna use sharp white cheddar. You know. This would be an appropriate time to that cheese at, and I do know where it is, but I'm, I'm old and tired, and I don't want to go get it. So, just, just put, here's a single frame, so John doesn't have to edit anything more. Here's just a freeze frame of me with a cheese hat, photoshopped on my head. Alright, sharp cheese. Sharp cheese. 
cheese cheese. The scientific name of cheese is queso queso. You can take that one to the bank or credit union. That looks pretty good to me. Okay, next up I got a can of pineapple. Sliced pineapple. So let's take a look what we're working with here. You could use fresh pineapple. I don't think that is an advantage in this particular application, specifically because we're gonna cook it and it's like a condiment. So like, do you need the finest pineapple known to mankind? No. This is pineapple in pineapple juice, but I saw they also sell pineapple in heavy syrup and I was like, no, no. That's the, for that jungle juice. Okay, what are we working with here? Just look at the rings. Because it's canned, it's like not as firm, I'll say. So actually, it, it, I think ideally, you might even have it a little bit thinner than that, but we'll just, we'll just, uh, we'll just do it that way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the rings in half and strategically place them on some of these. And my logic here, part of my logic, is I don't think I want every single one of these to have pineapple on it. You know, what if someone doesn't like pineapple? We'll do one, with no pineapple, one quadrant. Okay, next up we're gonna hit some of these with caramelized onions. And these are definitely thoroughly done onions. So we'll just go ahead and kind of sprinkle them around. You know, this is the kind of thing where you gotta know your audience, and by audience I mean your diners. Some people will go nuts and be like, yeah, give me all the onions. And other people are gonna be like, that's too much, Bob. So we'll just do like kind of a smattering. So well, I'm just gonna go ahead and put them on all of them. By the way, this was four onions, four whole ones. This is eight halves of an onion for people tracking at home. Uh, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, next up, we're going to place the buns back on top in the exact order that we removed them. Make sure your ham stays in the pan. Can't have your ham hanging out. All right, our next step, I'm gonna move our sandies over here. So I got a little bit of room to work and we're gonna prepare the topping. All right, I got a stick of butter. I don't know if we're gonna need all this, but I'm gonna just use all of it, because why not? I had a, an unpleasant experience. I microwaved some butter and exploded. And I, it didn't just explode. It exploded and vanished. There was no butter remaining in the bowl. So I'm a, I'm a little hesitant to <laughs> microwave butter now. We're gonna let that melt. We'll be right back real quick. Okay, my butt is melted. I'm still trying to use this jarred garlic. This is what we're gonna use. It'll be just fine. And we're also gonna add some mustard. Use a spicy brown, but whole grain would probably be even better. Which I might have, but I don't, I don't know. Ooh. And just to uh, crank the, uh, kind of like the 1950s aesthetic, we're gonna add some <laughs> Worcestershire Shire sauce to this as well. And add some poppy seeds. Lots of poppy seeds, actually. Turn the heat down. We don't really need to cook this at this point. And we're gonna try to mix that together. And I will let it cook for just a quick minute to take out a little bit of the pungent jarred garlic flavor that we all love, know and love. It's probably good. And we're gonna take this and we're gonna start brushing our buns. So instead of putting the condiments inside, we're basically putting some of the condiments on the top with the idea that that will help them brown, so you get some like nice browning flavor. And then uh, in addition to that, you know, it'll kind of like seep through a little bit. But don't be shy, like you can see, um, what I'm trying to do here is I'm like using my brush to scoop up some of the like garlic and mustard. And we want to like really, really paint it on. Uh, this is not healthy food. I, I should have uh, specified that at the beginning, I think. Not healthy food. Do not eat this if you are worried about anything. It smells really, really good. Okay, so we're gonna bake these, see what happens. We got 375. We'll check on that in 15 minutes. Really our goal here is to melt the cheese and maybe get a little browning on top. So we'll be back. See how those sammies turn out. It's been 15 minutes, let's check on those sammies. And ooh wee, man, looking good. So we got melty cheese, and actually the tops of the buns are crisp. Let me demo that for you, check this out. That's crispy. Now let's see if my pizza cutter idea is good or bad. What do you think, John? Will it be good or bad? Leave your guesses in the comments. Leave your guesses yeah. in the comments below. Then pause the video. No, pause the video, put your guess, rewind 30 seconds to build the suspense, and then we'll show you. I think it's gonna be fine. It's actually working really well. <laughs> I don't wanna I don't wanna jinx it, but I'm gonna say. Good! Even with the uh, chunks of pineapple, it actually goes through pretty easily. Please hold your applause. All right, let's see what we're working with here. I'm grab a corner piece. I'll go ahead and grab two of them. And there they are. And so it's probably gonna be hot, but I'm just gonna go ahead and try it anyways. <laughs> Ugh. 
It's really good. It's really, really good. Mm. So, you know, it's not gonna be to everyone's taste, but it basically tastes like Hawaiian pizza without the red sauce. <laughs> like, it's basically a Hawaiian pizza sandwich minus tomato. The top bun is crispy, and that mustardy flavor topping really, really complements the ham, the cheese, the pineapple double down on the sweetness, and the onions give it the umami bomb. It's like that. Mm, onion. Like you're just eating that same, you're like, oh yeah, it's a Hawaiian pizza. And then the onion comes, it's like, mm. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, that's really good. All right, well, that's our show tonight. If you like what we're doing, good. There are no further actions required at this time. We'll see you next time on PGC. God bless you and your family. And that's how you do it. And here's some uh, more jungle juice. <laughs>